Hello everyone, welcome to chapter chapter 13. This is the third part and in this part what we're going to do is we're going to look at ways to describe how much solute is in solvent to make the solution. And so you can prepare them different ways and you will express that concentration in different ways. When we looked at concentration earlier in the semester we talked about molarity, which is moles of solute per liter of solution. But there are a lot of different ways that we can describe concentration. So in terms qualitatively, in, 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 sorry, in qualitative terms, we can say dilute, which means not much solute, or concentrated, that has a lot of solute in it, okay? But that's still kind of a relative term. Concentration typically is going to give us a specific amount of solute in a given amount of solution. So I've mentioned molarity, okay, and molarity is what we used earlier, as I said, and that's abbreviated by capital M, and the units are in moles of solute per liter of solution. And this is the one you typically see, it's 1.0 M or whatever, okay? So, for example, if you have a two molar solution of sugar, that means that you have two moles of sugar in it in one liter of solution. Now, if you had two liters of solution, you'd have four moles. If you had a half a liter, you'd only have one mole. So, the proportion stays the same. So molarity, our most common concentration is moles of solute per liter of solution. And so if I tell you, you got two moles and you got two liters, then you divide that and that ends up being one mole per liter. And so that's a one molar solution. Molality is looks very similar to molarity, except there's an L here where there was an R in the other, but it's a very different concentration. Molality, which is abbreviated by little m, is moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. Moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. So it is, it is defined in terms of how much solvent is there rather than the whole solution. Molality does not vary with temperature because it is based on mass, not on volume. So molality, little m, is moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. We're going to do some calculations with these later, okay? Parts per, okay? Parts solute and parts solution. This is where you may have seen parts per million, okay? So parts per million and, and parts per thousand and all that, they're not hard, okay? What you've got to remember is this. You are very familiar with, with one of these parts per units, and that is parts per hundred. Parts per hundred means you how many parts are in a hundred parts, okay? What is that? That is percent, okay? That is percent. So parts per hundred is parts per 100 parts or percent. So Parts per million is parts per a million parts total, okay? So if you have 36 parts per million, you have 36 milliliters of solute in a million milliliters of solution. So all added together, all right? So, and they are, and it's a very easy uh, conversion. I'm going to show you at the end a chart that's going to give you all of the easy peasy ways to do these. All right, so parts per million, amount of solute 
per amount of solution times a million. Okay, and a lot of times you see milligrams per kilogram, that's parts per million, or milligrams per liter, which is also parts per million. Okay, so just um, this is the main one that we're going to see. If it's parts per hundred, you do amount of solute by the amount of solution times 100. That's the same thing as percent, right? If it's parts per million, you do the parts of solute divided by the solution times a million. If it's parts per thousand, it's amounts of solute divided by amount of solution times a thousand. So that's all there is to this. So don't let it confuse you. Parts per billion, following the same exact uh, line of reasoning, is if you have parts per billion, it's going to be parts of solute divided by the solution times 10 to the 9, which is a billion. So everything that has led up to this has been calculated exactly the same way. So those are our concentrations, okay? When we're making up a solution and we say we've got a one molar, molar or a one molal solution or we've got 10 parts per million or whatever. Mole fractions is a comparison between the moles of whatever you're looking at divided by the total moles. Mole fraction is moles of A divided by the total moles. So if you have two things in it, moles of A plus moles of B. It has no units because it's a fraction. And mole fraction is a percent before you multiply it by 100. So when you take a mole fraction and you convert it to mole percent, you're going to take that mole fraction and multiply it by 100. Now we talked about mole fraction a little bit in some previous chapters and I told you that the mole fraction, if you have your mole fraction, um, everything was going to equal to 1. Okay, your mole fractions. Whereas your mole percent is 100. So that's why your mole fraction times 100 gives you your mole percent. So it's a very, very easy conversion between mole fraction and mole percent. So here's the table I was talking about. And so this is a really good table because it tells you how that you are going to find these. Here are all of your parts per mass things. We were talking about um, percent by mass, which is parts per hundred. Same thing. Parts per million, parts per billion. There's also a parts per thousand that you see sometimes, which would be PPT. Okay, but notice in any of these parts by mass, you have the mass of your solute divided by the mass of the solute plus the solvent, okay, because that's the solution, and then times whatever the multiplication factor is, depending on how many parts it is, okay. With molarity, it's moles of solute per liter of solution. For molality, it's amount of moles per kilogram of solvent. That's the only one that just uses solvent. Mole fraction, number of moles of solute per the total number of moles of solute plus solvent. And then the mole percent is your mole fraction times 100. So all of these can be interchanged. If you know the concentration in one unit, you can change it to a concentration in another unit, okay? So this is your introduction to these different things. And then as we move along in the chapter, I'm gonna show you how to calculate these and then how to interchange them between each other.